Hey. Hey, how are you? Not too bad. Yourself? I'm well. You have to tell me sometime what what the uh, camera you have that does the gesture stuff with the Zoom. Uh, OBS talking, Bot. It's great. It's called OBS Bot. OBS Pod. Bot like rob OBS. robot. OBS Bot. I think it was a Kickstarter project originally, but you can now buy it directly. Um, I think some 200 something bucks. And yeah, so it only knows these two gestures, zoom in, zoom out and tracking. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's quite nice. So this might just be a very fast meeting with you and me. Um, I'm just uh, updating the hack MD for today. I did a little work on the project board. I share my screen. Um, so I thought, since it's just you and me, it looks like uh, Ken's on vacation for two weeks. He's going to Hawaii, which is awesome. Nice. Yeah. Um, I just took a whack at th these aren't all the things we're going to do, but what I'd really like to do is uh, geez, I would like to do this. <laughs> Let's just define like first steps of it. Again, um, I don't know how much resourcing you or I have or anybody else so you know we've got we've got a, a project defined with some clear things that we could we could do um and i've kind of gone through and you know tried to um um just kind of capture the stuff that we talked about but all this is just backlog right i mean there's all stuff that has to happen um but maybe we could choose like some small number of these as just a very first step um just right. so that, i don't want to really have any more meetings where we did them around and people show up and just pontificate and talk about things that are that are fun to talk about but don't end in action <laughs> um uh so a lot of the stuff i captured here is just stuff that has to happen eventually like you know we're going to need some documentation type stuff we're going to need right designs for the site, blah, 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 blah. And I didn't want to like lose them ADHD style from my head. Um, right. uh -huh. um, but I, I would like to really just maybe if we if we did only one thing, let's just let's just define like a first step. But but again, I don't know how much right. just, so we can define, you know, what, what, what it should be. But again, it, it I'm still somewhat new to the open community. You only have carrots. There's no dedicated resourcing. Mm -hmm. like you know to manage a project when it's all just volunteer work right um so. hey eric hello how are you i just thought i'd join to see what you're doing while i work on kubecon stuff in the background mm -hmm. <laughs> like my company's yeah, got me very busy planning for it right right that's that's actually what i wanted to suggest as well to take kubecon as um you know something where we at least have um the, the very basics together in the sense of if we know and that's i guess my main question um for you matt to, to figure out if we have anything from cncf in terms of the um online environment right so um that we actually know okay this is what we have uh, in terms of the the infrastructure that we can deploy the the very very basics just you know the the log routing and and the prometheus setup and you know have that for kubecon because that's a you know it's a, a relatively short but achievable uh time frame so that's like you know a month now um and or less than a month and um if we know what the what CNCF can provide in terms of, um, you know, the, the runtime environment, the infrastructure, then um, that would would go a long way, because then we have something concrete we can work against, right? I, I don't know if you have any information around that already. 
Um, I think that's. Uh, I do. So, Kukan is when help me out. So I have to go. Um, so if you if you uh, set the twelfth May twelfth there because that's the last time we meet before KubeCon, right? In this setup. The eighteenth and nineteenth and twentieth is when the showcase demos are open. Right, right, right. But the like we. Yeah. It, it, mm -hmm. Whatever we we have, if we don't have it by that date, then it's probably you know then, then people's like I I'm gonna travel on on Sunday uh, and so on. Then like if we don't have it by then, it's very unlikely that we get anything done in the the days leading up to that. Um, so I think officially it starts it's six, 16th to 20th. That's the official time range for KubeCon. But you know, we if we have it by 12th, then we should be we should be good. Is there cool. a CNCF booth at KubeCon? I, that's that's the other question that I'm not sure. Um, you know what we I know that in general six and so on we do have um, places. I don't know what what tag if a tag also or a working group in a tag actually has you know um, allocated some some uh, office hours or whatever. That's another thing we we probably need to figure out. And maybe that's something, Matt, that you can figure out if we have somewhere a booth. Um, as I said, for six, that's that's pretty normal, but I don't know what we can offer there. Um, so the question is, do we like this working group or do we tag observability? Like, like, uh, I mean, if if it's easier, we can do it in within the context of the tag. But as I said, I don't. I know for sure that six certainly have their you know reserved spaces and whatnot, like office hours and booths and whatnot. Oh yeah, so there's I, a maintainer what... track that there's a maintainer track that Bartek I think is working on slides for. I haven't talked to Bartek in a very long time. Um, I've offered to help with some content, but I haven't heard back. But I know he's doing a maintainer talk. Um, I right. don't believe we right. get like a booth or anything like that, but we do get a talk and I don't know what else is available. I'm not physically going to be at KubeCon. Um, right. So I've been a little bit out of the loop on the planning side. Um, you know, there, there's also a virtual uh, presence and I'm sure the CNCF will have something there. That might be a good place as well. Right. right. Yeah, I mean, we can figure out the logistics in terms of what exactly is available, uh, sure. Um, and then it's mostly, you know, we probably want to know who, who exactly will be there. I, I know for sure that I'll be there. I'm not sure about Ken. Uh, I don't know, Eric, Henrik, if, if you plan to be at KubeCon, um, then we can talk about, you know, staffing and, and whatnot physically or, or virtually. Um, I won't. Okay. I will, I will be there. I will be there. I will arrive the, the day before, for sure. Sorry to be late for that. All right, screen, by the way. Do you guys see the? Yep. Okay. Um, so, so for this initial, like, something to show for KubeCon, it seems like we'd probably need to clean up the charter that's like knit, knits, like a final pass, because that charter is just a kitchen sink document. It's not really okay. super well formed. Um, we should probably have like that read me just the front, the front door and how to contribute, because that's why we would want to be showing stuff at KubeCon anyway. I've already got an issue for securing resources from the CNCF InfraLab. Uh, and I think that issue has a link to where to go. There's like a template we fill out uh, to request resources. Um, uh, at least that's what Chris pointed me at. Um, and then just sort of like, what does that core base architecture look like? Um, I'm kind of, I know that there's two venues for actually running this. One is the Infrastructure Lab or the CIL. Um, and that is like where dev stats and things like that run and a bunch of other stuff. And if, if I'm not mistaken, that's like bare metal. Um, there's also a cloud credits program where we could run in AWS or Google or something like that um, as another option. Um, I'm kind of curious what, I mean, it seems like the, the cloud credits, if it's possible, would be a little bit easier, right? Because you've already got Cappy and a whole, a whole cloud organization, you know, making it easy to make clusters versus having to like run Kubeadm or, you know, provision our own clusters from scratch. Um, what do others think? I think that would be uh, easier for sure. 
and from maintenance perspective. But then we, I don't know how, um, I don't know how CNCF works on, on terms of budget, but uh, uh, who do we need to sort of uh, uh, calculate the estimate cost of the environment in the, in the per quarter per year? So then, the yeah, I, I'm not sure. It's all it's all in that um it's all in that thing. Does somebody want to? Does somebody want to chase that down? I mean, I, I, I could pick it up, but I want to be careful because I'm already a little overextended on a couple of different things. Um, or, or, you know, as this is early days too, like, I don't know, Michael, if you have special powers in AWS to materialize a cluster for a while or something like that, or the other choices we could, we could kind of hedge our bets and say, we're going to try to get a place to run this, but, as one of the core requirements for all this is you can run it locally, maybe we use kind or something like that um, for this initial demo. And then in parallel, we see if we can get something live, right? Um, so uh, I, I, I can have access to GCP stuff, but I think from a short term, then my, my, my manager would clearly uh, knock on my door and say what is that, that <laughs> what is that for uh, so I think we have to find a plan but uh, I'm I think uh, I mean it, I, I have no idea what how the, the, the budget com works with CNCF because I'm pretty new on this one so uh, uh, this is if we if we have a process or something then I could we can we can figure out uh, I already have a similar environment that I have so I can basically uh, Look at the the cost on the last. So then I, I can extrapolate sure. the cost that could that uh, represent for us. So do do we want to pick one of these to actually show, or some other workload? I don't I don't really care so much what at this early phases. Um, I just captured the ones that people had mentioned. Um, there was also this document from Ryan Perry yeah. who had something from Pyroscope that he had used Hot Rod or something like that. Yeah, it like so, makes these services. Uh, what do you all think? So I have the, like I said, like I said uh, previous, I didn't have the time to, I'm super busy this week, but uh, um, I have the Heaps of Shop that I already have instrumented using Open Telemetry. I have Prometheus, I have the metrics, I have uh, also a scenario with Log with Fluent Bit or Fluent D or whatever, or Stanza. Uh, so if we want to have a quick win, um, I think uh, the online boutique. Uh, that from Google for us would be a, an easy way to get something up and running, and then we could figure out other type of application later on. I think. Sure. Uh, what what what's it called? It's the uh, so it's it's been initially used as a hip to shop, but uh, now it's been evolving, so it's called online boutique. So it's a new version of the hip to shop. And for this one, I have plenty of options. I have either FluentD or FluentBit. I have one with uh, Open Telemetry uh, using traces, and I have a few examples of metrics as well there. Um, so yeah, and then if we want, we can also uh, we can deploy a, a service mesh there and and make the service mesh producing also distributed traces. So we can have those type of example as well. Yeah, do you want to use Linkerd or as of now in my environment, I have not used Linkerd. I've been using Istio. Oh, okay, well, sure, whatever works. Uh, um, did you uh, or have you already tried to do that within Kind, or is that or assume does that assume a certain? I have not. I'm. I'm I mean, I'm using a, a standard version of Kubernetes. Uh, so I never tried kind yet. It's just that with uh, between the app, Prometheus, uh, the various collectors, uh, and the logs, uh, I don't know how uh, how much uh, what would be the settings to to make it running kind. So I have no idea. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that might be an alternative to full online if the the you know online experience uh, is, is maybe too ambitious to to get into place by by kubecon um to have essentially a kind based deployment of your boutique um that you know in, in the worst case we can just run it locally on laptop uh, at at kubecon 
um, yeah. but I guess that would be worth exploring. So I, I can I can check it out. I'll, I'll put a note on this. So do you want to do you want to take on this one, Hendrik? Um, yeah, I, what I can do is I will take the what I because I have it on several. Uh, uh, this version of I've I've ten or ten or eleven version of that environment and different. So I just going to merge uh, two of them to get what uh, Flendy and log and traces and everything there. Uh, but I can take it. So if you, I would just let you know next week I'm off. Uh, so I would be able to uh, start uh, officially uh, pushing everything uh, from uh, the 25th, 25th of April. Um, so the, the issue I just added, um, uh, so there is a, um, there's a GitHub app that, that we use um, for all the tag stuff and CNCF stuff where there's like a settings.yaml file in every GitHub repo and then a bot can do things like make labels and do access control and stuff. So that's what that issue I added was. We, we, we have it in place now for the tag repo. Um, and I think it's possible to run like in our own GitHub org easily. Um, uh, let's see. So actively push manage repository without it. So I will, I will, as a general. So I will I will create a, a first branch uh, to name it like I don't know uh, uh, hotel and MVP whatever whatever the, the first one and then uh, from there once we are confident we can move it to master later on. Uh, I will start putting the readme file again. Uh, it's not going to be super beautiful, but we can uh, improve it. What's yours, Michael? Oh, there yeah, you there you go. There you go. <laughs> I think you're already. Are you already? In yeah. Here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think oh so. yeah, you're okay. So you're one of the originals. And then uh, uh, Eric, do you want access to this too? Um, you I mean, I. It's not. I don't think it's really necessary, but you can if you want. I won't break anything. <laughs> so, no, I mean, um, so I was running into issues where like, unless somebody has write access, you can't assign them to an issue and, and weird, like weird stuff like that. And we haven't okay. like made teams or anything like that. Um, okay. Um, what's yours? Is it Eric Adams? It's, it's a, uh, you're talking about uh, my GitHub e uh, email. It's E Adams Intel. E-A-D. Yeah. I-N-T. Yep. Like that. Yep. Probably shouldn't have put my company name in it, but oh well. Uh, okay. All right. So now, if I understand GitHub permissions from playing with it around, playing with it the other day, in theory, we can like put people on stuff now, or we couldn't before. So, aha, boom! Yay! All right. Um, and so I'm new to this GitHub, uh, this GitHub new project thing, but it looks a lot like Jira. <laughs> it's kind of neat. You can have like a Kanban view or you can have this like big issues view. And it's nice because you can do stuff across repositories, right? That's cool. But like as we end up branching out and doing more things, this can act like, so this is at the observe K8's GitHub org level, um, which is, so yes. my question on the observe Kubernetes hub, should I create a, um, the hub repo is aimed for the application that we're going to build or is it, what's the? Oh, no, so um, so I was, we can rename it to, uh, I don't know if anyone was gamers. I tried to, I tried to pull the concept from like three or four different MMORPGs, but uh, the, the hub repo was where, where I was gonna use just to kind of have like, front door readme's uh be able to track issues that are about like the whole effort but you know we can just make additional re i think we should we should not like plow everything into one thing that that was sort of just meant to be like one stop shopping at least yeah you know and if and if we end up with like a front door for the whole suite of workloads and apps and stuff maybe we can park it there but i, I personally would suggest we just make new repos in okay. this org for like individual things because then then we can version them independently. They can have CI/CD that produce artifacts independently. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And then it's maybe a little bit easier, and um, we're not all colliding, you know, with a ton of a ton of stuff. So, um, so I will create a new a project, a new repo in that uh, in that organization, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I will put everything there. So then we can adjust the hub once we have something uh, running, oh, stable. Yeah, and, and you'll be, you'll be like the first person, actually, maybe I should have invited you guys here, not on the hub, but I think this way you get access to the whole, yeah, that would have been more smart. Um, The Adams. Invite a billing manager. What? No, sorry. So, am I the only one that thinks it's weird that you don't choose a role here when you invite? Oh, there we go. Members. Boom. So you've got a pending invite now. If you just, I think if you just go to their base, you'll get it. And I'm gonna, I'll do, I'll do the same thing here. I should. There. This was the better way to do it. All right. So now we're all in. If you guys could verify that, then, um, then that should let you make repos in the org. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think yeah. I would write some, never mind. I can also say that I can promise I am actually uploading videos today. <laughs> this is the, the last the last tag observability in the last two of these. So they'll all be up on YouTube later today. I've just been behind on the download upload. By the way, Matt, did you have the chance to look at the open source news, uh, the, the one we, that was released uh, uh, this, uh, this weekend? So if what you're talking about <laughs> is or updates from both products. No, that's the uh, is it really really pure observable. Oh, oh, no, then I haven't seen the observability news. Uh, but but uh, could you could you drop a link? I'll I'll look at it uh, right after this. I'm behind on all the things. I've actually been doing a pile of work on um, on a different on, on the landscape graph project. Uh, so I'm a little I'm a little backed up. Um, and. Uh, I had a question, by the way, uh, which is, I don't know if it's you, uh, I just saw um, Lolita uh, promoting a open telemetry day in Austin on the 20th of June, something. Um, I was wondering what's the, what's the format of the event? Do, do we have any details on this one? Because it's, I was wondering if it makes sense to me to come on site or not. Uh, so I need to that's why uh, I was where, fishing for more details. Where, where, where are you seeing it? Um, I saw it on the. Wait, where is it? Ah, I missed the link. I have it here. Wait. Is it? Oh no, it's not in tag observability. So where is it? It's here. I drop it in the chat. Oh, I'm not familiar with this event, but it's in Austin. Oh, I wish we would stop doing things in Austin. <laughs> they have some interesting views on personal liberties. <laughs> <laughs> this looks really cool. I didn't know this was happening. Uh, Alalita would have details for sure. Yeah, because I was wondering if it... Uh... If uh, it makes sense that I, I because I, if I need to travel for one day event, reach out to just... her on the CNCF Slack. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a long flight too <laughs> for a day. But I, um, I will come up with something. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, so uh, just to just to close this down. Um, uh, so, Henrik, you're you're going to get your existing um, online boutique. Actually, I think. 
So I will start working on this, uh, like I said, on the Monday, the 25th. Okay. Um, is there anything else we want to kind of like put in scope? Uh, and does anyone want to take on any of this stuff? I mean, I, I can do some of it between now and then. Um, do we want to like take a pass at the actual website, like like a front door, even like a even like a? So I've got these two issues here. This I've got domains for both for observecase.io and .dev. Maybe we want to start with .dev because it's a little more closer to what we're actually doing. And then when this becomes more well formed, maybe the IO site for like humans that aren't necessarily already up to their eyeballs and all this stuff. Um, but I, I am not a front end programmer at all. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know if any, I remember you had said, uh, Michael, you had some kind of like site generator or was it Hugo? Is that that's what the CNCF uses for a lot of their stuff. They use Hugo plus Netlify um, to host things. Uh, but does anyone have any like front end chops or know someone who might want to make a front door? Um, also, not really a UI UI person. I, I would have so then, it so then maybe this one's not in scope for <laughs> maybe we don't do anything with that for now. We just get some stuff working. Let um, me uh, let me try to find someone internally if I see someone, but I, I'm not in touch with so much UI uh, developers. <laughs> That's yeah, I had two tasks to do some wireframes as well. Like, you know, I figured it would be cool to have like an actual like, you know, in Figma or something like that, like an actual design for what the site looks like rather than just kind of get a cookie cutter React thing that looks like every other site. Um, but yeah, that's probably out of scope for now. Um, is there anything else that people want to add here? even if it's not something we're doing now, but it's something that you know we might need to do, or... Um... I think... So... I think we should have... Um... Uh, first is the app, the, the, the short term is the app, but I think we should have some somehow if we start to have a, a, a local version to have like a, you know, with GitHub, you can make some tutorials. So uh, having a few tutorials on how to do, to go through step-by-step. Step. And then we can maybe ask, uh, or we can do it from by ourselves, but we could have someone from various projects doing their own piece of the tutorial. So uh, here I'm configuring, configuring, for example, the collector, to do this and this and this, so we can do a step-by-step -step guide. I think yeah, that will be also an end user or help the end users at the end. Okay. Um, one thing that I don't know if it fits here or not, that I, I kind of did actually, I'm looking at the dates, geez, this is back in January. Um, I was doing some work with Pyroscope and I wanted to have a kind uh, cluster that could run ingress, like Nginx ingress with actual certs um, just like you would in production. So I could get out of these like awful patterns where like you have like Docker compose locally or like you're running on kind locally, but like you're not using cert manager, you're not using ingress, you're using like port forwards and other stuff. Uh, and so I hacked up something and I honestly still don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I kind of cobbled together some ideas from various places uh, and so I've got, I've got a config running where I can make a multi-node kind cluster running on my laptop here. Uh, I can run Nginx ingress and I'm using DNS mask to fake out uh, a top level domain DNS resolving. So I've got like halcyon dude dot hack, right? So like a service foo exposed by Nginx ingress can look like foo dot halcyon dude dot hack. And because it's an actual top level domain, I can generate certs for it and use cert manager and like have the same config locally that uses ingress that I would have on an actual cluster where I want to pipe traffic in from outside. Um, and, and it all works because like, you know, when, when everything is, when, when you know, if DNS resolves that fake, I use dot, dot hack because there is no TLD for dot hack. So like, so I documented and captured the steps to, to, to set it all up, um, it actually works pretty well. 
Um, and it might be, you know, I combined that with um, a local, I'm still in the middle of doing it, but, uh, you know, running like the, the basically the Grafana stack because it's easy um, on that kind cluster locally. So like you can have like a development environment that's like got all of, you know, it's got Loki, Cortex, Prometheus, all, all the stuff, um, you know, running, but, but using URLs that you can just hit from a browser without having to port for it anything if you're local. Um, and I can't, I've been waffling for a month. Like, is this a terrible idea because it uses DNS mask hackery to just totally fake the DNS resolver? You need a resolver and, and a couple other things. So this resolver config and a DNS mask config. But it, but it works really well. <laughs> Um, and it lets you use ingress locally. So I think it depends on the, the end user. I think for most of us, it will work, but a lot of people have really tight restrictions on their laptop. And I think if we have that hack, it won't work on those. Oh, it's totally systems. unsafe. I mean, like anyone with direct local access, you know, you're, you're surfacing ports. You can put it on, like, you can do some other stuff, you know, to, to be really, it's really easy to get wrong. It's really easy to just have like an open port on your laptop, right? But again, you're behind a NAT or something, so nobody can really reach it anyway. Um, but yeah, it is it is not best practices. But I don't know if anybody else has found like a good way to have a local development configuration, like all up, be similar to what you would use on a real cluster. Um, or you can use uh, inlets, right? You can use what? Inlets. Um, but today I learned inlets. In, inlets .dev. Yeah, this one here. Um, oh, inlets.de is a different thing. Inlets dev. Um, oh. The one and only Alex is behind that. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Works pretty nicely. Oh, is this like, there was another thing like this. Where um, Quick links and stuff like that. I can't remember what it's called. I, I I have been using what was it? Um, can't remember. There, there is a, a SAS uh, yeah. proprietary thing that I've been using. Ngrok could be. I think Ngrok, Ngrok. was. That's it. Yeah, uh, and and inlets in a sense is kind of like the, the open source self hosted version of that that Alex put together and is quite successfully disseminated. So would inlets let you resolve a TLD? Is that is you can do pretty much everything with it. As I said, I'm, I'm mostly familiar with, with Ngrok. Um, so I, I don't know all the, the details, but I know that inlets is, is pretty, like he did once a comparison, I think also inlets versus Oh, Ngrok. I see, They're using let's encrypt. Okay. Thanks for the link. I'll have to, I'll have to check this out, but you, this is a paid for service, right? There's an open source version of inlets. So you, you can use the, the paid for okay. service, but. Um, so does anyone else wanna either join me and tag team or just do it uh, working with the CNCF InfraLab and Cloud Credits to see what's possible? I mean, I, like I said, I'm, ha I'm happy to do it, but I don't wanna sit on all the, <laughs> sit on all the fun stuff. Um, I can, if you want, I mean, I can try to extrapolate with the, with the environment that I am running on GCP and get the, the cost that I'm currently having. So I could help you there, there if you want. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll add you to the GitHub issue with me and we can collaborate there. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not a bus factor. I want to launch this thing and, and do the work so that maybe after KubeCon or through the summer, we can start taking on contributors and they can kind of like, join something that's rolling um I, I don't so anyway i'm just identifying anywhere where i'm like by myself on something uh you know because i think buzz factor two plus is, is better um and so likewise if you want any if you want any review or help on the online boutique especially for the next couple of weeks i have some free time um cool i'm curious though does your solution run on a vm I'm trying to think how, like, on my corporate provided laptop with all these security things, it, it would work. So that's why I was suggesting kind, like, you know, because do, do you have a Mac laptop? Uh, no. Linux works too. I, I have my Windows stuff using Brew just to make 
make shared scripts easier, even though I don't need it. But um, I mean, all of this should work, at least, at least in, in terms of like the division end or charter, this should work on any cluster, right? Uh, public or not. So like if you can run Minikube in a VM, uh, that would work. You could run Ubuntu in a VM and then on top of there run Kind with Linux Brew or or just with Kind, you could run K3D is another one. Um, yeah, we, we have Windows. The Intel provides us all with Windows laptops unless you're willing to, I mean, you can do Linux, but it, there's a lot of hoops and they don't provide direct support. So it's a real pain, but I know a lot of people that do run Linux as their primary but then you end up running a bunch of VMs for all the Windows surfaces. I, I, I used to do that. Um, I've had a lot of luck because I run Windows too. I've got, I've got a bunch of, I've got a couple thread rippers. Um, I'm, on a, I'm on a Mac laptop a lot of the day, but I have PCs as well and, and some surfaces. Um, I found WSL2 to be really nice. Um, yeah, I've, I've used it. it you know, but I've run in, Linux kernel. I've run into bugs on it though. Like I... I was trying to make a FAT32 boot image and I, I just couldn't do it. It was very frustrating. Couldn't mount it. Oh, and yeah. Um, ironically, I found issues in the WSL2 implementation of DNS mask that makes my <laughs> hacky top level domain thing work everywhere except for Windows because Windows doesn't correctly handle some pieces of, of the DNS resolver stack um, with like known bugs and yeah, I just I mostly use my laptop for uh, web browsing, e Outlook email, and then a PuTTY SSH session to every one of my other servers. So, I personally, other than WSL two and running kind in there, which which works, but it's a little clunky too, just from the UX. Um, I haven't found a great way to run local clusters that doesn't have caveats. Like it seems like everything I touch. If you're doing it on Windows, you know, you get stuff, but um, that's just my experience. Yeah. I, I mean, how do, you, how do you run Kubernetes now on a, in, your, in your current world? Like, do you have an ability to run like a local cluster that you can just use for local dev? Local dev or? Um, I, I don't, I don't even bother because it's Windows. I'm, I'm very fortunate that I'm the lab manager. So I have access to quite a few servers that I can just, do what I need to do with, but oh, you, say you, have, you, have, you say you have some extra servers that you might want to host an open source project out of. I don't know if we could. Um, that'd be an interesting proposal, though. We do have. I mean, we have the capability to, but the problem is, is that um, in, in Intel as a company, they're trying to take away everyone's sort of private labs by groups and consolidate everything into just one massive checkout system where there's, you know. For, for three, for like 500 to 1,000 servers and you have to reserve it for a week and it builds the OS for you. But we always have, because we do customer support and stuff, we always have special requests and special networking that they can't accommodate. So we've been able to justify our lab up to this point. But the one guy that knows how to do everything is looking for another job. And so I don't know what I'm gonna do if he leaves. Probably gonna lose our lab at this year is my, my suspicion. This could be very well, sad puppet, for me. No, but out of curiosity, is it like Chef or Ansible or Puppet or, or? Are you, I think what, it's like, a homegrown solution. Oh, of course. Because they, it's it all uses Pixie Boot, and all they do is they provide you the OS. So really, they just have a, a management system and a DNS server and stuff for you. Just go in, and they have a web-based interface that someone built that you check out. You say, "I want this system." Um, and you reserve the system, but you can only reserve the system for like a week and you have to get, and then some people have uh, clusters of systems that they control. But even if you control the system, you can't like completely control it hundred percent. It's, it's a, it's a really weird setup and it works okay. As long as you're not like trying to set up an open shift cluster or something that has these crazy networking and load balancers and things like that. But just to get a system or a server, it, it works good for like people that are doing pre-production benchmarking and stuff like that. Cool. Um, okay, well, so it sounds like we won't run stuff there. Um, well, I, I don't know. I mean, you keep the idea open. I, if I can do anything to justify the lab, I'll, I'll try to come up with a way. Well, so I, I think it would be cool to, to have whatever we end up with being able to run, like I said, anywhere, like, in particular, like I kind of want to make, kind of want to gamify it, 
and like let the cloud vendors like donate more credits because their competitors are. So like if we have this running in, you know, Google, AWS, like AKS, GKE, EKS, for example, and then like Intel or whoever else, like we could have like a well-formed way to run this either on a laptop or hosted for the world to see. All right. So maybe, maybe this, maybe this thing evolves to, to, to be existing in many clouds. Um, yeah, and we have our own cloud called Intel Dev Cloud that we, I don't know a lot about it. It's just something that for, for developers that can get access to the latest hardware to try out stuff. It's mostly for open Vino and things like that that Intel provides. But that, that's something that our group was looking at trying to build recipes for, for some of the stuff that we show off. Because I work in the group that does a lot of the device plugins for Kubernetes, or I work alongside those engineers. I don't do them myself you know, things like exposing SGX enclaves or quick assist adapters or Intel graphics or th those types of things and operators for Red Hat. I mean, one of the more interesting workloads, I think, to be able to kind of like observe in a nuanced way is actually machine learning and model training workloads, right, that need mm -hmm. um, NVIDIA or other GPU accelerated hardware. Uh, it might make a nice use case if you were able to get access to some of that stuff, even if it wasn't too computationally expensive, right? We could we could run Kubeflow or something like that, training a model that does like whatever, right? Um, and just like demonstrate that as a representative workload. Um, I don't, again, um, I'm not sure what we have available to us in the CIL from the CNCF, but I'm guessing there's not a bunch of like NVIDIA enabled nodes. Um, yeah, and I, I don't, I, we'd probably be more focused on the Intel discrete graphics. Which is coming out at some point, but you know, actually that's a good question. I don't, I don't know a lot about our discrete graphics and I think I'm gonna look into to see what kind of uh, tracing support so, they're planning on adding. The other thing so really, really, you said you're doing a lot of networking. Um, I've been talking with Lee Calcote over the last few weeks. Um, he showed off Meshery briefly at our last meeting, but um, layer five, which is Lee, um, they're involved with SMP, uh, SMI and SMP. SMI is the service mesh interface. It's like the, mm. you know, uh, and then SMP is sort of the framework that all of these meshes, all dozen of them or so, um, use to benchmark themselves and report performance numbers. Well, meshery kind of is this like automation piece combined with a modeler um, that's a CNCF project that is all about deploying Istio and Linkerd and Tenzu Mesh and App Mesh and you know, all the different, you know, uh, Kong and there's a whole big list of them that are all integrated there. Um, if you have like custom hardware or custom networking stuff, like like you mentioned, um, a whole nother like area of interesting things to show is you know how do service meshes perform, um, both from the observability metrics we get off them, but just the you know, the traffic shaping scenarios, as well as all the policy based stuff, you know, retries and rate limiting and mirroring and uh, get ops scenarios, like every PR gets an endpoint kind of thing. Kind of. Yeah, uh, I don't work on the networking group. Well, I haven't worked in there for 15 years. I did a long time ago, but we do have smart NICs at Intel. And I think that there's probably opportunity for optimizing those for service meshes and getting telemetry out of it. I don't know how any of that works though for our NICs. But I, I know the people that work on it though. You could certainly ask the question. In any event, um, I reached out to Lee as well to see if there was some way we could kind of use either Meshery or Nighthawk. Nighthawk is in that same ecosystem. It's like a test harness that runs tests against networks and then mm. captures the results. Um, like all of these might be interesting workload drivers that we could bring in, uh, you know, to Hendrick's point about, um, uh, you know, getting some quick wins, right, without having mm -hmm. to write the world. Because for the, for, I, I, I didn't have the time, the chance yet to look at their product, but I'm, I'm I want to. Um, but in the in the case of our environment, the, you, I really like the K6 support that they have. Mm -hmm. Because for us, for us, for the use case of showing what you get from a traces perspective or anything, K6 with their plugin will basically be the root component that will start any spend or traces, and then you'll have the, the full end-to-end -end story. So that's 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 in terms of visualization, it's 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 pretty nice. 
But I, I'm pretty eager to, to test the uh, Nighthawk and and all the testing capabilities of Meshery because it's really, I think, really excited. Really great solution. Yeah, the, the other thing was that, that, that I saw that might actually be relevant to this project as well is it's called MeshMap. Um, and it's sort of canvas-based, clicky-clicky. You, know, you can drag and drop almost like WYSIWYG, you know, ingresses and services and workloads. And it can either look at a cluster and then generate that blueprint or that map of that thing um, as a starting point that you can then mutate, or you can use it as an authoring tool to make different kind of scenarios and then persist them. Um, and it's kind of neat because it's driven by the open API endpoints for all the various Kubernetes releases. So like all of the different, you know, specs are all versioned and baked right in there. So um, again, I thought it might be a nice like adjacent project that we could use for some quick wins as well. So um, I've just started looking at it though. Agreed. Um, so uh, I realize I haven't been sharing my screen, so I'm like pointing at things that you don't see, but um, so it looks like for this KubeCon EU milestone a month away, we kind of have five things here, or six things. Actually, I'll share my screen so I don't have to, I don't have to, um, Talk at you. There. Am I sharing the right screen? Yeah, I keep going. Yeah. You have a demo. Yeah, yeah. So we've got kind of these what, what did you were five things. There's probably a sixth one here that's like this is like cool. We have a workload to observe. We've got some like administrivia. We've got securing the resources and like making a high, high level design um, for what this thing might look like, like the infrastructure for it. Where mesh map actually might really help there as well as some other things. But the last thing we don't have here is actually what's the observability stack we're going to use to observe this. Um, do you think we should define that core MVP? Like it probably involves Grafana, I'm guessing, for lack of something. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. yeah go ahead. We discussed it already, right? We discussed it already uh, last time, the time we did. before. Uh, I don't know if we have an issue for it. If not, I will go back through notes and find it. The um, the only thing is is I was because so I will put Jaeger. Um, I think it would be great to have a. I, I didn't. Do we have any open source solution that is able to provide metrics, traces, and logs in the same platform? So we could do. I suppose, well, so that, that's why I said Grafana, like Grafana can, has plugins for all the things, right? So, I know, I know, but it's, it's <laughs> that's the way, the way we discussed last time. But so that's why I was wondering, because I can use Jaeger just to, for the traces, but then we will have Prometheus in one end, but we have something to visualize with the, the dashboard. So I think Grafana is, is still pretty standard solution now. But, um, you know, I'm detecting like hesitancy and I'm not a hard sell on, on using any one thing. Um, is it because of AG, AGPL that you're kind of like, uh, there are other dashboards that, that could be could be used. I just, I don't, I'm not intimately familiar with any of them. Um, so you, you're not aware of any open source project that has sort of trying to provide the, the three the support of the three signals? Uh, apart from like Grafana, Prometheus, Cortex, Tempo, Loki, like yeah. that, the, 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 uh, temp, Tempo would be a, a durable trace store that's very similar to Cortex that's open source. Um, it's not a CNCF project, but it's an open source project. Um, I think Jaeger is sort of the gold standard, right? Um, I don't know of too many others that have a nice UI ready to go. Um, and and if you use a, so I've used Kiali only with Istio. Kiali is nice. Yeah, that only works with Istio, unfortunately. And because I know that you can push metrics, traces, and everything, so I was wondering if uh, I never tried to ingest uh, something else <laughs> in Kiali, so I have no idea what what would be the how Kiali will sort of react with. Uh, the, the data. So I guess I'm not sure what you're asking. Like, like the Oto collector, obviously, and the whole open telemetry stack, you know, captures all that stuff from the instrumentation capturing, and then can I was emit, you know, to various backends. 
So you're asking about an open source tracing backend that's not Loki, or that's not Jaeger or Tempo? What I would suggest is that we make the, the live demo with uh, products that are CNCF or, or attached to CNCF or open source. Um, and then in one of the hub or one of the solution, we should have a way either we work, work through Helm charts or whatever, and people can basically uh, define what are what is the destination for the metrics and logs and, and others so then uh, at the end uh, that will update the collector to use the right exporter to configure the right endpoints and and people will be ready sort of to to uh, run it and see uh, data coming in in their own platform what do you think that could be a i think a good good uh, Good, interesting solution for the for the users. Yeah, Jaeger is Jaeger is. Oh, I don't have the stupid levels in here. Jaeger is um. I should just know this off top. <laughs> I actually, I know they're a member, but did they ever donate Jaeger the project? No. So Jaeger is in the sense, yes, I actually don't, that, 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 that's a very interesting point. We don't, we don't have, a trace backend, do we have an open source CNCF project that is a trace backend? No. Kiali's yeah, in there. Should be, it should be eager, but I don't know why it's not listed. Yeah. That's strange. Hey, Victor. Victor is a metric now. Or Victor. Victor, you said? Like Victor, Victoria metrics? Or Vic yeah, Victoria metrics, yeah. Is it in the scope? Yeah, time series, I thought, but I haven't, I haven't looked at them lately. Anyways, I think I slowly need to drop. Yeah, I need to drop as well. Um, I have another meeting yeah. starting in a few let's, seconds. Let's make sure that we continue the discussion on the Slack channel as well. Yeah, so in my from my end, just to, to recap, I will, I will work from uh, once I'm back to create a repo. And uh, Matt, ping me when, uh, when... Oh, no, it's there. It's a graduated project, of course. I don't, I don't... Have we just found a bug in the landscape? Sorry, I've been, I've been working on a, a graph database version of the landscape, and um, I've been finding some weird things like that don't like like this category is all broken. For example, like like Jaeger should be here. Yeah, it is there if you scroll down. Oh my god, I was looking at it and just assuming go. I think I need to go have some coffee. <laughs> All right, let's continue the discussion on Slack. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. All right. Have a great Have a uh, end of the day then. See you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks.